What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Tuesday, January 30th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, you'll have to pay to use the highway. Flame EVs. Next up, wind turbine explodes after bursting into flames at the quiet Welsh farm, showering broken parts on the ground. We love uh, a good little stew addition to a title there at the end. Next up, over to our favorite state, California and Big Oil are splitting up after century-long affair. Next up, high electricity prices have Europe facing deindustrialization. Don't let it happen here. And then finally, European Energy cancels wind project on offshore Denmark. Another nail in the coffin um, for wind. And then Stu will then quickly toss it over to me. I will cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today. Mainly, uh, we did see prices drop oh, about a percent and a half. Uh, due to a couple reasons, and we're going to slowly start seeing earnings drop out. So we will cover all that and a bag of chips, guys. Um, Stu, what do you got for us today? Okay, let's get ready and rumble here. Um, let's start with this one. This is from Javier uh, Blas, and he is cool cat out of Bloomberg. Uh, you'll have to pay to use the highway. Blame EVs. <laughs> Um, this one is, uh, there's a, uh, subheading here. If governments succeed with their green plans, the fuel tax revenue they rely on will disappear. It's time to devise an alternative system. This article, uh, Javier just absolutely does a great job going through it. And we're going to go through some of the numbers here, but, uh, insurance companies are going no EV for you Pay three, <laughs> four times. And then, they, you know, they're the what soup Nazi of EVs. Now the insurance companies. Yep. So, um, and also the weight of the EVs is just unbelievable. And then they weigh wear through tires more. So here we go. Uh, the last five European economies uh, earn more than 150 billion. That's 163 U S from fuel levies or about 2% of their total tax collection. I, I need to go look up, Michael, how much the U.S. makes in tax right, off of the gas. And then you had Nikki Haley saying the other day, I will never raise the gas tax. And then she said the other day, I'm going to tax gas. <laughs> So they get addicted to that that tax thing. So how do you replace it? I don't know. Uh, you got to pay for the road somehow. Yeah, no, you're gonna have to do it. I think it's it's super interesting. The the, the real the real answer then is do you, do you get I, and this is what Javier brings up. Do you get a discount? To and what happens if you have different GPSs between different cars? He brings that up where it's like now. Well, the question is, is the taxation based upon that? And there's so and, many questions based upon you, this. And do you charge uh, by the mile or do you charge uh, by the use of the road? Do you pay as you drive? Um, it's all, it's one of the things that Uber struggled with. Remember when Uber oh, came yes. out? Some people might not remember this. I happen to do that because... Um, you know, lo and behold, I was actually an Uber intern. I wasn't an Uber driver. I actually interned at Uber one summer um, wow. before they IPO'd, and I got an interesting little look. But just they used to charge by the minute. But right. what happens was if you're sitting in traffic, you're racking up tolls and right. not doing anything. So what did they do in order to lower prices to get more people on the app? They switched to a mileage model, which lowers the price for me, the consumer. But who does it hurt? The driver, it hurts all this other stuff. Yeah. So if you shift that system to us and EVs and cars, you're the one that gets uh, uh, right. taken into the drive through And and then uh, Javier also has in here a different li uh, line, and that is taxing electricity is another option. So if you put one of them bad dog chargers in there, uh, you're going to be uh, taxed a bunch. The other one, a different article I read on Sunday uh, said that the equivalent for charging your uh, charging your car fourteen dollars a gallon. So, uh, oops. 
Oops. Okay. Well, All good. right. Let's move to this wind farm. What's next? Hey, uh, Miss Producer, can you bring this uh, picture up here? I, I really think the wind turbine explodes after bursting into flames on quiet Welch farm, showering broken parts. This looks like my brother and I on the farm when we were having potato guns fights and we would put M80s into uh, uh, tire pumps and just blow each other up. Uh, Larry, the cable guy, learned from us because we brewed each other up all the time. So let's go into this, this poor little thing. Uh, Nick and his wife, 61, 51, were stunned when they saw burning parts of the turbine fall more than 100 feet to the ground. Um, they're not very friendly when they start blowing up. No, and, you know, I mean, this, unfortunately, is, you know, it, one of it's the... A, it's. It, th there's downsides to everything, but having exploding ex exploding engines on a farm is not good. No. And I think the other issue is this is obviously catastrophic failure for the wind farm. So the question is, do you have to decommission the wind farm? Do you what actually then happens once these things, you know, once this thing explodes, really like what's next? You got to take the ones that are irreparable after so many years, which is anywhere between three and eight years. Uh, and it's in Texas, it's over $480,000 just to take one down. Doesn't include transportation, doesn't include mm. getting rid of stuff. That is just the cement problem. Mm. So here's the farmers here. And the biggest problem that David Blackman and Irina and uh, Tammy brought up on the podcast on Monday for the, the energy realities is the fact that uh, you have uh, so many wind farms do not have the reclamation at the end mm -hmm. in the price. So these monoliths to uh, the Green New Deal, nobody's going to pull them out. So, yeah, no, right. and uh, right. it's let's it's go to the next one, baby. High electricity prices have Europe facing deindustrialization. Don't let it happen here. I didn't write that one, Michael. I take credit for it. That's yeah. what caught my eye on the article. So, uh, after years of misguided energy policies, Europe's electricity has become so expensive that trade unions have started warning of the threat of deindustrialization. They're a little late. Um, it, Germany has gotten rid of their oldest steel mills. They've gotten rid of uh, BASF, uh, closed their fertilizer plant four months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gone to China. Uh, Volkswagen, all of this is because of, according to the European Commission, the industrial output in the euro area plummeted 5.8% in the 12 months preceding November 23. Capital goods production was down 8.7%, which has averaged more than a 3% GDP and wiped out in a single year by soaring imports. Uh, they, It's even worse. This, this article in here is just like abysmal. Mm -hmm. This is happening to California right now and New York. People are bailing out of there like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I think what's what what this tells me and what this I think this shows is that if we allow if we allow this to happen here in America, it's only going to become more expensive. You think it's expensive in Europe, guys? It's going to be more expensive here due to the fact that a lot of the raw materials that we need for this come, you know, have to be shipped across seas. You know, we don't have access to a lot of these raw minerals. It, you know, I mean, we, we know Europe shot themselves in the foot by blowing up um, the Nord Stream. Excuse me. Russia did that. Sorry. I don't mean to. I mean, I, I got my own conspiracy theory on that one. I, and I say that only as a joke in that we can see what happened again. The European Commission industrial output in the Europe area plummeted 5.8 percent in the 12 months ending November 2023 capital goods production was down 8.7 that problem's only going to be exacerbated here in America if we allow this to keep going oh absolutely and Putin has increased his Russia's doing actually quite well so um hey let's go to the last one here 
um, European Energy Channels Wind pr Project. Uh, oh, I, I also uh, I skipped over the California and big oil are splitting, but uh, so I'll go back to that here in a sec. European Energy Channels Wind Project offshore cancels. So here we are. Let's have a moment of silence for this wind project uh, off of the coast. Okay, thank you. Um, they they can't afford it. Uh, here where it is. Uh, we've tried to get the project to fly among other things in coexistence with nature. But we have to uh, note that the authorities and politicians have not much interest in this. So they're only when they get their kickback as a politician, they don't care if it actually gets installed. <laughs> no, they don't care. Listen to this one. Since our feasibility study permit has a height limit of 200 meters and today's offshore wind turbines have become 256 meters, uh, it goes without saying the project has no future. So I, I didn't see how much they've already spent in it, but it's a bunch. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate because if anything, offshore wind has held up the best economically relative to all of the others. And if we can't even get a new project installed, what does that tell you about the long-term well, the, outlook of this stuff? The one that we talked about a little while ago was the one off the Great Lakes uh that had 40 yep. uh, was it 52 uh, million 52 million 52 million for four wind turbines and 27 of that uh was already spent on permitting <laughs> and they never got any installed let's go to california real quick uh big oil uh california and big oil are splitting after their century long affair uh, i didn't do that one either but uh let's go here if uh miss producer if you could bring in california sees a four decade decline in crude production um Ooh. you go to thousand barrels per day um one a million barrels a day 1.1 million barrels per day and they have gone le uh over half they're now down under uh, 400,000 uh, barrels per day. No, four. Yeah. A tale that's old as time. California decreasing their crude oil production. Stu can't read units. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, California has become, has outright gone to war with the oil and gas business. And we saw this. Chevron has come out, written down their California assets. They did that last quarter. Billions of dollars they just wrote off right. because they realized they can't do anything in this state. They've gone, and I mean, they, they love this. If you showed this chart to Gavin Newsom, he'd love it. Oh, yeah, and here's my prediction, and that is there are, I have talked to folks, and Gavin Newsom is planning on buying his diesel and his gasoline from China. So, uh, you know, I'm not ready to put that out there that I have it documented, but hey, that's a heck of a rumor, man. Yes. I'll tell you what. Uh, so you have all you think you're getting seven dollar gas right now in in California. Try shipping it across the ocean from China. President Z, even though he's got cancer, uh, you know, he's going to be all happy. He's also going to vote in three or four elections here. So let's go to the. I think I'm done here, dude. Yeah. <laughs> hey, nothing like hearing President Aziz voting in the in the U.S. election. But before we kick over and cover finance, guys, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here. Um, the the news and analysis, quote unquote, that you've just heard um, is brought to you again by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all of your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job keeping this website up to speed. Everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business. Uh, you can hit the description below all the links to the articles. You can also check and email the show questions at energynewsbeat.com. You can see that description as always for the timestamps dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. But let's go ahead and flip over to finance. We did see S&P 500 up about uh, three quarters of a percentage point. NASDAQ up about 1.1 percentage point. 30-year uh, yields fall about a quarter of a percentage point. 10-year yields fairly flat. Um, same with that dollar index. We did see uh, uh, crude oil continue to to tumble a little bit, unfortunately, after after what was a, a really nice 
Friday pop. Um, you know, mainly the 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 as again the the demand side of the equation, specifically of what's going on in China, has has kind of flip flopped. We heard on Friday that positive economic news and 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 when I mean positive, hey, they're just going to do more stimulus. So maybe that's not positive news, but just interesting news from the fact that there's going to be more money specifically in that Chinese economy. Well, now what we determined, what we found out today was that their property crisis is, as we talked about last year, they right. have, you know, they, they're going through their own mini version of, of, of 2008, but it's really with property developers versus necessarily people getting into homes they can't afford. The problem is Evergrande, the largest real estate holding company in uh, China, was ordered to liquidate certain assets today. Um, you know, yeah, not good. Um, it's, it's not good when a Hong Kong court's got to order the liquidation of 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 China uh, or of Evergrande. They, they, you know, they're 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 called China Evergrande Group. Um, they trade on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. You know, now. What does this mean? You know, it's just a Hong Kong trading market, so it's not necessarily this isn't the Chinese government it's stepping in. Hundred billion in debt. It's it's something absolutely it was so, it was crazy insane. like that. Yeah, bad um, management, man. Yeah, really bad management. Bad, you know, we we always say good management, good numbers, bad management. Whew. Bad, bad numbers. I mean, I mean most people are uh, fairly familiar with that. Um, you know, we did see, you know, U.S. troops were also attacked near Jordan today, which why they're there is another question for for all of us. But that that's going to continue to to teeter um, that geopolitical tension. But I think today, really, that 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 Evergrande news sort of takes the cake on that. You know, really, besides that, Stu, as 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 we go look at what what happened today, we we, we are going to start seeing some earnings drop. Uh, Ring Energy they did announce their their earnings today, um, mainly focused on on new production along with debt reduction. They did offer so, some guidance, um, and um, did you, you know, know that they're still on free cash flow right now. Do ya? Well, um, just to give you guys an idea, Ring Energy they did about nineteen. A uh, thousand barrels uh, of oil per day, about seventy percent of that, or excuse me, that's BOE per day. Seventy percent of that is oil. Um, you know, they 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 went ahead and have basically added in three months of sales from their recent founders oil and gas acquisition, oh, um, nice. which was which was awesome. Um, and they did go ahead and reduce their debt by a whole whopping three million in the fourth quarter of twenty twenty three, um, while funding the final eleven point nine final payment in December for the founders acquisition. So nothing like paying down a little bit of debt, but then taking more out to go pay down an acquisition. Um, guidance um, for first quarter 2024 is going to be about 18,000 to 85, uh, 18,500 BOE, about 70% oil. Um, you, you know, they're, 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 they're saying that mainly because there's about a 2000 BOE drop for about two days or for about 10 days, which is, was associated with that severe weather that we saw. So I think that's the other interesting thing to point out. We are going to have a little bit of a uh, dip in production for a lot of these companies, mainly due to the fact that it's been absolutely on um, that cold streak came and absolutely shut them down. Besides that, Stu, not too terribly, um, not too terribly, um, I'm crazy for them. They're running about a, a 37 to 42 million a quarter, mainly based on a two rig drilling program, one horizontal, one vertical. And they're hoping to do four to five horizontals and four to six verticals within that first quarter. So a lot going on for ring. Um, we also saw, you know, we're going to be seeing a lot of companies coming up. We got, you know, everybody's announcing it's really that end of the, uh, End of the end of February is when we're going to see the majority of, of all this stuff drop. So it's it's just it, it's going to be crazy, Stu. So uh, what else you got? That's all I've got. Oh, uh, I heard Biden is uh, possibly going to be telling the Congress that we have boots on the ground over there. So that what a mess. I also heard he had 187 IQ. Is that any rumors to that? I heard uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, our favorite uh, 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 press secretary, when asked today about Biden's mental fitness, said he has 178 IQ. I, I, I have no it. idea how he could have that still, because when he <laughs> ice cream, translated, that is, uh, uh, where's my diaper? Yeah, I'd like some ice cream. So, oh, I would too. I, I this that's disgusting. It's all about it's about the only thing we can chew right now. Uh, but that's all right. Um, appreciate everybody for checking us uh, out. We've got it. That means see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>
I guess there's no better way to leave that, guys. Absolutely packed week. Thanks for checking us out here on this gorgeous Tuesday, January 30th, 2024. For Stuart Turley and Michael Tanner, we'll see you tomorrow, folks.